Yep, You're always hot. Well, thank you. <laughs> Very kind there. See how Athena Finger is? We start a panel here at Lake Collecticon in Mount Dora. She compliments me like that. Thank you, Athena. Of course. And you're hot, too. Thanks. She's actually an artist, which we're going to get to here in just a few moments. Now, for those who are not familiar and those who are attending the panel here, she is the granddaughter to the co-creator of Batman, and that is Bill Finger. And I can actually say that, co-creator, isn't it? Yes, cool? it's so exciting. I love it. Now, how many years was it? I don't, I'm not trying to do trivia with her. Was it 75, 76, 77 years without his name? Yeah, it was in uh, 2015 when wow. he finally got credit. And Batman 1939 was published. So from 39 yes. till? 2015. No Bill Finger. No Bill Finger attached to the Bill to the Batman name, just Bob Kane. And let's see, was it Batman versus Superman? Was that the first? That was the credit? first motion picture. Um, the first credit in film was supposed to be Gotham. Oh, really? Okay. But actually, there's a little trivia for you. Uh oh. Uh oh. Do you know the first TV show that Bill's name? Yes, appeared? I do. 1966 Batman series. He did the Clock King episode. It's William Finger. Yes, but that's not his name. Really? He never went by William. It was always Bill because his real name was Milton. So I don't oh, know wow. how they got the will. Well, I mean, it's a well, logical leap. I mean, William they're trying to be respectful, is supposed maybe. to be the full name for Bill, but he never went by William. No, um, since the credit was given, not the 1960s okay. well, TV show. All right, all right. <laughs> Do you know? No, I can't. Uh, let me think. Animation? Cartoon? It was. Ooh. For Cartoon Network. Cartoon Network. Have to be Batman based. I I don't know. This is Robot good. Robot Chicken. Really? They beat him to the punch because Gotham was Monday nights. Right. And Robot Chicken comes out Sunday at midnight. Oh. So technically that's Monday. Right. So they had their big DC episode and they gave Bill credit first. Wow. <laughs> I think that's that, the coolest in the world. That is cool. And I, there's photos, if I remember correctly, on your Facebook page when you went to, or maybe even video, when you went to the uh, Superman versus Batman movie where you, the credits, uh, you, this credit scene, if I remember that? Yes, uh, I'm sure there's pictures of it. Um, it was so weird being there in the theater. Usually people hoot and holler for all the different people. Right. It was so quiet in the theater this time. And I was like, yay! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, wow, I feel really lame now. But like, it was super exciting because that was like, the big moment. Like, wow. The world is now seeing it. Because, you know, I mean, not everybody gets robot chicken or right, Gotham. Right. So I was like, I was really in awe and so happy and just wonderful feeling to have it there finally. So when you were young as a child, that is a toddler, not toddler age, but, you know, first grade through, let's say, eighth grade. Right, elementary school. Did the family talk about Bill at all? Was there like, you know, your grandfather, it was, he did some really big things in creation. Did they talk about it or was it? Um, well, I didn't grow up with my dad. I knew that. Um, so it wasn't like we would daily reminisce. I mean, he would tell me stuff once in a while. Um, it really wasn't something we discussed in the house very often. I mean. Now, the, there's a video, a documentary, which mm -hmm. you are focused on. You're centered on with that because of Bill and your relation to Bill. And it's on Hulu. For those who haven't seen this, I encourage you to check it out. It's available. You can watch Hulu for free, I believe, for yeah, like 30 so days. Yes, you can get a 30-day trial. Yes. So this is something to check out. If you never went to Hulu before, there's a reason. <laughs> there is a segment there of when you were like in third grade, fourth grade, you wrote a, an essay, I think it was? We had to write a little book about our life. Okay and like illustrate it and like tell the story of our life up to that point. And part of my life is what my grandfather did. And you know, we didn't have the internet. It right. wasn't you know, easily accessible at the library to look them up. <laughs> so people questioned it and they were like, well, if that's true, then why don't we see your grandfather's name in the comic? Or why don't you have like a ton of money and live in a mansion? You know, right. it's like, cause things don't work out that way. It's not, you know, people don't always get recognition or credit for things that they create. So it was kind of something that I stopped talking about because yeah. I just didn't want to be 
questioned anymore. Right. So, um, I mean, we we bring it up once in a while in the family, but again, it was always we don't know what avenue to take, we don't know what to do. We're told that it's an impossibility to get it rectified, and people have tried and gotten nowhere. So it was kind of just like not forgotten, but just a non-issue for a long time. So you didn't grow up in a house with Batman paraphernalia, memorabilia, stuff, you know, no, scripts actually, and things like that? No, actually, I was kind that. of like, don't be part of that culture. Okay. <laughs> but I mean, I was also creating my own art at the time, so I wasn't like reading comic books. I'm sure if I was into it, my mom would have been fine with it, but it wasn't just, it wasn't a medium I went to. Um, something that my father and I did a lot was we were into horror. So he would take us to the horror movies all the time. And th that's kind of more what I went to. And, and like I said, I was creating my own art. I was too busy drawing and painting myself to look at other people's comics. <laughs> okay. Now, so. how did it start where somebody actually came to you and said, you know, you're related to Bill Finger. DC's not acknowledging this, that he's a co-creator. When did it come to be where you actually connected with somebody that you believed could make a change, or make Bill's name known to the public? Well, that was in 2007 when I met Mark Nobleman. He had contacted me through MySpace at the time um, and said that he wanted to write a, a biography about my grandfather and was doing this intent, you know, intense research because there's very little out there with Bill's name or people who knew Bill because I mean we're talking 70 years ago right so um, I was excited that somebody one knew who he was and was like passionate about telling his story and really wanting to get Bill's name attached to it like the family has always wanted to do so that was um, really a moment where it was okay this is something that needs to be addressed not right at this very second um, but it definitely needs to be something that we need to reassess and see what our options are and you know what exactly is known and not known and and, and coming into that world I've learned so much not only about the fans but also about my own family I mean I wasn't alive when my grandfather was alive so I had to rely on stories from my father and his mother but they both died when I was young so it's you know they're not there I can't right. turn to them and ask them you know so can you tell me that story again uh, you know or do you have something else that you could tell me? you know th they're not there so uh, it was amazing to find out that there were people that one were still around that knew him mm. um, Two, were enthusiastic to talk to me about my grandfather and share their experiences and just tell me more about who this person was that I don't know. There were some very powerful nerds, if you will, celebrity based that knew of your grandfather, like Kevin Smith is an example, who wanted his name to be out there. Right. Well, there's, I came to find that there were quite a few people out there. I had no idea. I really had no idea since I wasn't part of the culture that people actually knew who he was and like were like, no, he's the real creator. Like, we know the story. We know the true history of the character and the creators and like, he got screwed and yeah, he did. And so it was like, wow, like one, there's people who actually know him now and mm. with the internet and having information so readily at your fingertips, that also helps. Because people, when you bring it up, you can say, oh, go to his wiki page or Google mm. it or, or just you know, do a little research. It's all right there for you. So there was this big shift that I recognized. Now being the third generation, it, was, it kind of fell on me. Okay, time is running out. Right. This is my opportunity to either do it or don't do it. And if I don't do it, then I'll never know if it was able to be achieved. Wow. So it was that was a big moment in my life. Did was there any opposition from like the Kane family to you uh, to any no. of this or to try to stop this in any way did they no they were very quiet they uh, which i find to be really strange um with the 75th anniversary you would think that they would have yes. somebody representing the kane family i mean it's huge 75 years I mean, right the year before that was superman and that was a huge deal 
Um, quiet. No, no public anything. Not a statement, not a convention, nothing. You, I, it's so weird. Has anybody told you or somehow you found out through research or somebody researched that, do they have any material, the Kane family, that has of your, you know, that Oh, I have no idea. Uh, um, material that... I, don't, I know that Mrs. Kane is older now. Uh, maybe, I don't know, maybe something will happen when she does pass on and the family will find something. I have no idea. Again, they have no communication wow. with us. Um, and I've never heard a press release so, or any kind of statement from them at all about anything. So we're not going to see an Athena Finger blank cane panel or... I don't think so. Out. I mean, when Mark did an interview for NPR a few years ago, I know that one of the, I think, granddaughters or something got in touch, or a niece or something, got in touch with him on his page and was like, why are you spreading these lies? You know, wow. Bill didn't do what you're saying that he did. It was all, you know, Bob Kane and this, that, the other thing. So that, that's the only thing recently that I've ever heard of them protesting, but nothing like other than that, like no, like nothing. Well, Absolute silence, <laughs> it's so weird. Well, you had, on your side is Michael Uslan, who owns the electronic rights. Is that the correct term that he... he I don't know if it's the electronics. I think it, it's, it's the film, yeah. video game, maybe. I'm not sure on that. I think Keep it's the, they consider that the TV, motion, film, film, TV, motion media, or that, motion, that's, something like that's that. That's his. Yes. And, and he is a supporter of... Oh, uh, yes. He's been a huge supporter of Bill Finger. He actually got to meet my grandfather really? um, at a con, the very first one. Uh, that they talk about in the documentary. Um, he walked in and sat down at the bar next to him and had That's a coke. Right. That's right, I remember <laughs> that. And had a conversation with him. They were there with Otto. Otto actually knew Michael and his friend from them going and visiting him at his home and talking comics with him. And so Otto was like, hey, you want to meet the creator of Batman? Wow. And so uh, the first time I met Michael, he made sure he told me that story. I was like, the first, he's like, I have to tell you. And I'm like, oh my God, that's awesome. <laughs> You're amazing for telling me that. Now, so <laughs> Please check out uh, Athena's Facebook page because I think there's video of you giving a painting to Michael Luzlin. Yes, I, I did a painting of the Michael Keaton Batman. Um, as a gift, he's been very kind and gracious and welcoming of me into this very strange world, uh, but a lot of fun. Um, so I, I wanted to do something special for him, oh, so that's... I gave him that, and um, I hope he's enjoying it. <laughs> it. It's beautiful, and for those who don't know, Michaelism is very important because he believed Batman could be in a film. Uh, this was the time period, a little bit before actually Superman in 78, and then he was shopping around trying to get that into film. and. People just weren't buying into it. No, they didn't think that Batman could be serious and right. dark and gritty like he was in The Roots. Because um, they were still looking at the Adam West, Burt Ward, yes. 60s version of the Batman, which was very campy and light and bright and, you know, not serious. Right. But it has its own place. Sure. Um, I mean, a movie came out of that. The TV show came out of that. But... Really, the character is dark and right. mysterious, and you know has a lot of layers and a lot of conflict within himself. So, yes. you know, Michael really wanted that version of Batman to come out. So I think he chose very wisely for the first, yes, the first one, and then of course progressed from there. So. You've been in a lot of places. You've done San Diego Comic Con. You've done New York Comic Con. You've done other conventions as yes, well I have. from this. What What is your favorite to be at or to do? I mean, do you just love them all? To be, to be well, they're all so different. I mean, San Diego and New York are like the biggest ones. Um, and when I go to San Diego, I go there specifically to give the Bill Finger Award. Um, the first time I went to San Diego back in 2014 was for the 75th anniversary. So I was on panels and things like that. Um, it's, uh, it's it's massive. New York is massive. Um, it, again, I go to work these things, so it, it's a little different than just being an attendee. Right, so, right. Um, but I mean, it's it can be a lot of fun, but it can be overwhelming. I like some of the smaller ones better. 
it's just a little more manageable. You can mm. move around a more little easier. Yeah, yeah, you can talk to people a little more. You don't feel so pushed or rushed. Right. Um, you can take a little more time looking at people's work too without feeling like you're being pushed with the crowd. <laughs> I mean, it, literally in San Diego, that's the way it was this year. I was just like, I can't even stand still. I keep getting pushed. But um, uh, I like the smaller ones. I really do. I, I like that I can talk to people and it's not so loud and you're not shouting at each other. You can actually have a conversation. You get to meet different variety of people too it's not right. always the big name stars like i like meeting some of the local artists that are in the business or or just even like the cosplayers and stuff they put so much work into oh, yes. what they do so i have a lot of fun with whatever i go to though i mean how can i not it's batman <laughs> now, have you turned into just out of curiosity a batman collector do you have you added things is there things adding into your bat cave Batman base. Oh, uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> so, so is, is a fan, I'm just out of curiosity. I'm kind of curious because I have friends who are celebrities and other things, and they get things from fans. Have you gotten anything like that? You know, from well, I have. Um, I've gotten comic books from people. Uh, I had this one gentleman who made me tote bags with Batman really? fabric. Uh, sent me a bunch of those. Uh, people bring me stuff at the cons, like I said. Mainly it's like, here's the comic that I fell in love with, here oh. you go. Um, it's more just hearing their stories. That's what I really like to, to get from the fans. What What's your connection? You know, how did, because you know, a lot of people take Batman and they say, well, it influenced me in this way, oh. or it helped me cope over, you know, with this trauma, or, or whatever their situation. I like to hear that because it means so much more than just what Batman is saying in the books. It's, they're taking that character and really using the strength and the power mm. of it. So that's the gift that I like from my fans. <laughs> are, are you starting to go back, or have you over the past, since 2015? To the comic books that your grandfather wrote? Uh, um, I mean, we, I've always had compilation books like Chronicles and okay. Archives and stuff, so I've always read a few. Um, and anytime I would go to a bookstore, I would always go to the comic section okay. and look. And I wouldn't read the books, but I would specifically look to see if Bill was listed somewhere oh. in the book. And I was, you know, because he got a lot of recognition for his writing. He just right. didn't get recognition for being the co-creator. So that's where I would see a lot of his name would be like, oh, writer, Bill mm. Finger, you know, writer. And it wasn't just for Batman. He did, you know, he created Green Lantern yes. and he wrote for Superman. He wrote for so many that, you know, it got to be a bit much for me to learn all the different ones wow. he was in. But over the last several years, I have started to explore more within the Batman universe. Like, you know, people recommend things. Like, of hmm. course, the Dark Knight series, or you gotta check out Grant Morrison, or, you know, a friend of mine in high school got me turned on with, to Alex Ross and, oh, and yeah. things like So, like, people are giving me the good ones. Like, they're cherry picking it for me so I don't have to. So they're like, here, you have to read this one. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> good. I didn't have to read 50 other books to get to that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, I've been collecting stuff a little more. Yeah. So you, you have your collection, mm -hmm. and if I remember right, don't you have a DC, didn't they give you the like an original script? They gave me, and I was really surprised they even had this, but um, when I met Paul Lovitz back in 2008, he um, took me on this great tour of the office when it was still in New York, and he's like, come on, let's go out to lunch. I'm like, okay. <laughs> he's like, but I have a present for you. And I'm like, oh. okay, you have a present for me? Like, why would the president of DC Comics have something for me? I was like, okay. He's like, no, I want you to have this. This is the last script that Bill ever submitted to DC Comics wow. before literally the day that he passed away. And I'm like, what? Really? <laughs> and so he handed I was like, wow, because there's nothing left. There's, mm. there's really nothing out there. I didn't know if any collectors have scripts or anything do you know uh, no i mean it, again they didn't really see the value of these things back then so it just ended up in the garbage most of the time the sad thing is that when my father went and cleaned out bill's apartment he did see the value of certain things okay and he did bring some stuff over to dc and they're like here you should be holding on to this this is important and they didn't want it 
Wow. So it all ended up in the garbage because my dad didn't have storage to keep oh. this stuff. So to have something and it's the last thing that he submitted, that's pretty huge that's precious. for me. So I was like, wow, um, thank you. <laughs> so yes, I very have nice. the very last one. I want to ask you a question that uh, you don't have to go detail based on, but dark side of celebrity. Has there been a dark side of people that were friends you hadn't talked to in a long time, all of a sudden come out of the woodwork because of this? Has there been that as... Oh, for me? For you, a dark side. No, 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 no. Um, not really. I mean, to, no. I mean, okay. people have been really good to me, actually. I haven't had any, I mean... I, have, I didn't know if there was like any... I have stalkers that are not Batman related. Really? Okay. So... That's, you know, okay. I don't have Batman stalkers. <laughs> and, and no Bob King groupies that are contacting you or, you know, showing no, up No, 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 because, I mean, people really want to know the history. And if they, I've never come across anyone that was like, you're full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> you know, no, they, they're like, wow, I had no idea. It's more of like an epiphany for them. They're right. Like, oh, it's really true. One person couldn't really do all of this themselves. So it's more of that. It's not like this weird, like, I'm going to, like, stalk you. <laughs> no. That's Just a good my thing. ex-boyfriends do that. No. Okay. Well, <laughs> Just kidding. Oh, sure. Okay. <laughs> the imaginary question here, the, the impossible one, if you could go back in time and you could talk to your grandfather, at any given time, what what would you say to your grandfather? That's hard. That's a good question. Nobody's ever asked me that. Um, I could go back and talk to him. Is there something you want to tell him? Show him? Uh... Well, I mean, I would definitely want him to like see the magnitude of what his creation has done. I mean, mm. you can't go anywhere without seeing the Batman logo somewhere. Right. Um, so I don't, I'd like for him to see the magnitude of what has come from his imagination. I think he, he probably got a little glimpse of it after the TV show, mm. but it wasn't so global at that point, like it is now. Right. Um, I think he would really be taken back by that. I mean, I'm taken back and I didn't create the damn thing. And I'm just like, wow, it's literally I, everywhere. Um, I can imagine if you showed him the screen credit, you know, the- Right, the, well, I mean, that's yeah. the other thing. It's like the only time he got to see his name is when he did write the one episode for the TV series. Right. So I think that he would really get a sense of pride. Wow. Finally, the recognition. And yes, I really am getting, you know, the credit that I do deserve for my imagination. So um, that's probably more I'd like for him to really see that he is valued and appreciated and celebrated. Okay. What is your favorite form of Batman? Is it video games? Are you a gamer? Are you I playing? I am not a gamer. You're not playing the games? No. No. <laughs> so, I've heard the Batman games are very good, though. Okay. I mean, I do have some friends that are gamers, and they're like, yeah, the Batman game was really good. I beat it right away. And I'm like, oh, OK. OK, no Arkham, Great. No Arkham Asylum for her. Uh, what, about, no. what about the animation? The, uh, is um, it live action? Is it the TV well, show? Well, I used to really love the Batman anim the, the animated series back in the 90s. Oh, the Bruce Timm thing. Yes. Well, I mean, it was so amazing like nobody was doing those kind of cartoons so and having them on like during the day for children yes. to watch like we had our adult cartoons that we were able to watch but right. this was mainstream everybody was exposed to this darker character that yes. he was really supposed to be <laughs> um so i think the tim Burton film kind of catalyst mm -hmm. for that so um i really like that i i like the movies I've, I've always been a movie goer so um of course the christopher nolan series was superior interested to see what's going to happen with ben <laughs> were you happy with ben in the in the the Batman versus hit? Superman, yeah. I was okay. very pleased, and he was really good in Suicide Squad, and I'm excited about Justice League. And okay. So, I mean, I think Ben is good. I think he's a great actor. I, I think people are ripping on him just because they want to rip on someone. Oh, they, back in the 89, they were doing that to, to, everyone. to Keaton, you know, they, they I mean, were ripping him. 
Yeah, but he's like one of my favorites. Oh, I love that first Batman movie. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Please. <laughs> yeah, that's fantastic. I love that. Do you remember where you were when you saw that first Batman movie? Did you see it when it came out? And... Oh, we were denied. Really? Yeah, my dad um, and I tried to go see it in the theater when it came out. It was sold out. Oh. So we didn't even get to see it together. Oh. But that's okay. I mean, I was, what, in 89? I was, like, in the 7th or 8th grade at that point. So I was, you know, I probably went to go see it with my parents at some other point. Okay. But it was good. I mean, I fully enjoyed it. And, yeah, we were at our usual movie-going spot. All right. <laughs> Now, you are a creator in your own right. You have the creative juices. Yes. You are a painter. Yes. Is that the best way to illustrate yes, a painter? Yes, that's the medium that I'm doing right now is a lot of painting. And you recreated covers of yes, Batman. And she does a great Batmite. If you ever get a chance to see the Batmite, I love the Batmite. She does <laughs> fantastic Batmite. Thanks. <laughs> and are you going to show these somewhere, like a gallery type of situation, or? I'm trying to sell them Okay. Right now, well, actually. tell us, how can, how can we find your paintings that are for sale? Just go to Facebook. and Right off your Facebook page. Right off my Facebook. And do, out of curiosity. <laughs> or Twitter, if you want to get into Twitter. She's Twitter. on Twitter, too. And she's on Instagram, too, as well. Yeah, so, I yeah. just got Instagram. <laughs> she is on Instagram, as well. Yes. She's on those three platforms, yes, at least. Yes, I am. Or, you know, you could just send me a message on Facebook, and I'll give you my email address. Okay, there we go. <laughs> um, I do commission work. That's what's going to ask. Um, so... If there's something that you'd like me to do, if you have a cover or an image. So if I wanted a man bat, I could just say, I, think yeah. I want a man bat. Yes. And I'll, I'll, we'll put that together for you. Wow. Um, <laughs> there we go. Uh, but I also do other things that are not Batman related. I mean, I'm, right now I'm doing another flower piece with a hummingbird. And I try to do a little bit of everything. Cause wow. I'm formally trained in fine art, so I, I try to keep my skills going with that. Since, I mean, I wasn't creating any images for a very long time. Um, I was still doing creative stuff though. I was making jewelry for a little while. Um, I did like little sculptures for a little while. I mean, I was always trying to at least create something. Photography was a big part of my <sighs> life. So I've, I've tried to do a little bit everywhere. And painting has just recently come back to me. Wow. There we so, go. Check out her Facebook page. We'll put a, right here, there we go, nice little Facebook thing right there. It's magic. Uh, you know, it's going right yeah, there. Right yeah, it's right there. Yeah, it's right there. I that, see it. Yeah, it's right there. <laughs> check out her Facebook page and check out the art, and it will be a unique piece. And matter of fact, with uh, the holiday season just around the corner, great gift, you know? It is? Yes. Reasonable yeah. prices. Yeah, there. <laughs> There you go. And I'm going to maybe embarrass her here for a second. It's not Batman based. I just want to let people know she is extremely smart. You're into math, aren't you? I am. You're, <laughs> I'm you're a, a math geek. Yeah, yes. <laughs> this, she is really into mathematics. This is like I have a, you know, a Sheldon from Big Bang Theory right next to me. She, yes. I've she, never watched that show. Well, that's okay. It's a compliment. Yes, it's a compliment. Uh, He's into Thank math, you. too. He's into okay. Math. But everything else you're not liking. So, <laughs> trust me, you're not. You wouldn't be able to do this panel. Okay. Yeah, yeah it, would, it wouldn't happen. So, Athena's really smart. I wanted to point that out. She is probably one of the smartest individuals I've ever had the pleasure of being around. And creative you. together. Uh, it's, it's fantastic. Yeah, people don't get it. They're like, you create art? I thought you were into math. And I'm like, <laughs> I use both sides of my brain. What can I say? <laughs> Well, I, I, I've heard that some musicians are very talented mathematic-wise. But, ma but see, music is math. It's different than doing fine art gotcha. with actual, like, Well, you're drawing, visual. well, see, the ones on the left side of the brain, the ones on the right, right. side of the brain, correct? But yeah. math and music are the, on the same side. Gotcha. Where visual art is different. Gotcha. It's a different concept. So, yeah. Well, she's using both <laughs> hemispheres. She is... <laughs> Check that out. See, you got to meet Athena. Is there any conventions in the near future off your head that you are uh, going to be I don't at? have anything planned for the rest of the year. But okay, you never promoters, know, something might pop up. If you're watching this and you have an upcoming event, Please. think of Athena. Uh, contact her through her Facebook page, I believe. Yes, that's the Facebook. easiest way. I'm always on Facebook. And yes, I'm old school. <laughs> yeah, check her out and, and, and bring her to your event. She will liven it up. I guarantee it. A very unique guest. And we've had the pleasure to talk to Athena Finger. Athena, thank you for thank being on the Ryan and Kimmy Show. Thank you for having me again. It's always fun. I appreciate it. Hello.